Hello everybody. I got a 2012 Honda Cross Tour. It's basically a Honda Accord with a little hatch. It's a pretty looking car. Uh, this simply has some cylinder head issues. Uh, and, I, and I'll tell you, it's, it's got some bent valves. I'm just going to be straight up. Uh, it just got here yesterday. Me and the lady talked and uh, it came from another shop. Let me tell you what's strange about this. The car came from another shop that didn't do extensive repairs, and I just I just find that I just find it strange. It has bent valves. They did the timing build, you know, to see if it worked. In all fairness, I could understand it. I mean, I got a video where I just threw a time build on the car to see if it worked because you never know. Um, it's a it's a roll of dice, but if it worked, you're in good. If it don't, well, you need a motor. So it needs it needs head work. They can do the time belt and water pump, but they don't have the means of pulling the exhaust, the valve covers, and then just pulling the heads off. I just find it to be strange. It's like it's right there. Just pull the stuff off the top and pull the manifolds, pull the heads. That's it. That's weird. I, I for me to be as low as I am in a one man band, I, I don't understand. And I guess there's a lot of things that's gonna be uncomprehensible in life. So so today, uh I think yeah, I've been talking for like a minute and forty one seconds. I'm gonna pull the coils, pull the plugs, look down the cylinders and see if there's any broken pistons. And if so, then I'm simply gonna have to pull the motor. I did quote her if we want to put some pistons in here, just do a full rebuild, pull the motor out and redo it. Um, but I, uh, I think, I think the pistons can be replaced with the via, with the via engine inside the car. I think it can. And if it, if she's fine with that, then we'll take that route. <clears throat> if not, um, and she just want to opt to put another motor in here, then we'll probably do that. Uh, let me say the vehicle has 159,000 miles on it. So it was one of those things, the cost of an engine parts and labor is going to be, the same price for me to pull the engine out or leave it in here, do the heads, the valves, um, and new pistons. So it's like, well, what do you do? You get a 70,000 mile engine and eventually need some maintenance like valve covers and stuff like that. And, you know, cause she already got new water pump and stuff or just pull the motor and just rebuild the whole thing. So I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things. Um, so I'm going to pull the spark plugs. Well, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to let you hear it because you got to hear what it sounds like because it, it, at one point it did backfire real bad. I let the battery charge it for a while. Uh, it, it, the valves are bent. They obviously are. And just need to look inside the cylinder to see if there's a, uh, any broken pistons as a result. So let me show you what it sounds like. <clears throat> That's, that's exactly what it sounded like. It sounded like it tried to hit one or two cylinders, probably got some compression. All the other ones don't. Time belt broke while she was in motion and driving. And she said she was accelerating, trying to pull around another vehicle. So this is just to make a break, whether it's worth redoing the heads or either throwing a whole motor in here. So the video might not even wind up being anything, to be honest, which is might just be a dud if I find a broke piston. So... Yeah, let's just go ahead and uh oh, go ahead and start pulling some stuff down. Usually, I'll do the easier bank last because the harder bank is just that the harder bank. Um, Oh, well, I know that valve got to be tore up because look at that. The, something broke off and hit that joker. And it, it's not bad, but, you know, it could, it could, it's a lot of things. 
this this doesn't look good. There's water. Now that's fuel. I thought it was water, but that's we have a broken insulator. And, and it looked like the, there's some bridging, so some oil consumption. Uh, so this cylinder has a burnt valve. There's no compression because there's unburned fuel. The engine has some slight oil consumption. And there's some material plausibly that got on the insulator that broke that broke the insulation. This one's okay. So this may be a good or decent cylinder. Still bad. But that plug looked a lot better. Um, now also the PCV systems here. So it's a possibility this cylinder may be uh, a byproduct. That plug may look like that. Uh, let me show you. This plug will have this tracking because of the oil consumption, because of where it's located. The PCV on cylinder two here, it goes right in here and then it gets sucked up in that chamber. Now this one has low compression, two, four, six. Nothing but gas. Let's get the camera. Camera, I'll be using the test long here. This does have the 90 degree angle right here. There's some cameras on the side. There's one, and then there's another one directly opposing to that. Directly Let's opposing. See. There's a 90 degree view. And there's a valve. I don't know if that's closed. It's supposed to be closed or not. Let's see if we can get a. So <clears throat> the detail is not going to show that well, but there's combustion like smoke or there's there's smoke in there and I, and I don't know if that's the byproduct of um a broken piston or whatever but there's smoke in there and obviously well not a broken piston I mean it is could be could be a broken piston from another chamber oh wait I don't know which which one is this there's a valve this valve looked bent this this valve is bent. Let me see. Nope. Nope. Okay. Here we go. There's a valve. Uh, I have to look at all of them. I'll see what I can. If I find something interesting, then I'll make a note of it. But I don't want the whole video of me just looking at all these valves and providing my commentary but if I find something interesting I'll come back and show you all right found one with the burnt I said burnt valve huh? I found one with the bent valve this is cylinder four and let me show you I'll go up to I'm not sure which valves are open let me take a better look so the intake valves are Let's see here. So the intake valves are fully open right there. And then check this out. That one's that exhaust valve is slightly open. They're open pretty big too. Um, those are bent. Open and open. Open. piston top so I just go down there and check and make sure that there's no damaged piston which look fine it has relief cuts in it but it's a possibility it could have damaged something you can kind of see the impressions right at the top where it hit the valve I can see them 
those clear marks right there. There was the relief cuts. That's where it hit the piston. So we can, if I can go a little further down. No, nope. that's just the reflection on the on the wall there. Let's go to. So I'm going to cut the light off of that be a little bit more detailed. It's a cylinder. This is cylinder six. These are okay looking. Nope, uh, I guess these are. Flip this around a little more. Nah, I can't get a good visual. I have to spin the engine over it. This one definitely has bent valves. Again, mainly, uh, I just want to make sure the pistons aren't broken in any way. Move to the rear bank. Got my rear bank pulled out. Here's number one. And if we get this light on, this is plug number one. We have porcelain broke around the electrode, the insulation. And uh, there's a little bit more carbon. There's some, well, no, there's no carbon. Uh, which is a sign that the piston like it was not consuming oil or had minimal consumption. Um, this one looks good. One, three, and five. Here's number five. Very minimal oil consumption. I mean, these plugs are old. So you can see the compression seeping through the porcelain there. So... These should have been changed, and this just overall shows like a lack of maintenance on the uh, owner's behalf. And to confirm that, this timing belt been making noise for a while when I talked to her, and she never got taken care of. The uh, infamous rattle noise, she said it would do it in the morning and stop. This one did it. It kept on doing it, and I can promise you that it kept on doing it. She ignored it, kept driving it, and it broke. That's what happened, I can promise you, based off what she said, obviously, and the context clues of her spark plugs. This car is 156,000 miles, and uh, these are original. Why right, we gotta be original plugs in there. And, all right, let me put the camera down right there. This is right here. This is the valve for number one. And I can't get the camera down even any further. This right here is the valves for number one. I can't get the camera any further. I'm going to bump the engine over and see if I can capture whatever happens. Oh, 
Okay, so they moved. Cool. We'll be back. All right, on cylinder one, you can see up here, there's also some contact that was made from the valve to the head. Uh, so detail's going to pick up all that. But there's carbon buildup on the piston. And um, there's a clean impression right there. Wiping off that carbon on top of the piston. Looks like a valve. So I think that this one also has a bent valve on this cylinder. I mean, it just looks so clean. That swipe right there. So there's the relief. There's a swipe, like a perfect uh, quarter circle. So I think, hmm. probably have to bring it up a little closer. Let me try. I got it up a little closer. And yeah, I'm still pretty confident that's what that is. I don't doubt it. All right, we'll move to the other cylinders. I really wouldn't, I'm just, again, I'm just making sure that there's no piston damage. The pistons aren't broke. That's the biggest thing. I don't know where in the world am I at. Where we at? There we go. And, uh, all right, this is, uh, Got a lot of oil in there. <sighs> this is number three cylinder. This one's good. And I can tell you because I, I got the camera in the hole for the spark plug. And when I go to bump the engine over, it just pushed this camera out. So this got good compression. I'm gonna break my neck over that one. No. Let's go to this last one, the fifth one. Let's see what that looks like. Hold on, man. Uh, this one over. Here's the last one, number five. This one looks. So it looks okay. Can't see on the far end there. The oil on the cylinder walls. Just need so much oil. Golly. These are valve seals, likely, unless the valve seals are leaking so bad. I mean, either way, when I get this head off of here, it's getting all that. It's getting uh, modernized. Ugh. Can't tell me this car didn't have like an oil consumption problem. Yeah, they don't look good. Man. I would think, is this, you would think this is direct injection or something. Jeez Louise. Ugh, looks horrible. All right. Um, I think I'm good. I'm, I'm just going to say that. I think we'll be able to get away with just doing the valves and uh, doing some head work, getting the head serviced. Uh, we should be in good shape. All right, let me get this customer quote and see what we can do. When I get these heads pulled off, I'll definitely update the video. Uh, we'll go from there, but I'm just eager to give her some numbers so we can start work on getting this head replaced getting this the heads off and getting a better visual all right folks it is the customer and i already negotiated the prices they already got the deposit 
So you see I'm already pulling the heads off. I don't have the heads off yet, obviously. I just got the intake off and I was like on the phone with my girlfriend. So here we are. This is as far as I got. And I'm slowly chipping it away. All I gotta do is um, pull these valve covers, um, slip the time belt off, and uh, yeah, um, pull the exhaust. I'm, I think I might be able to get the it just loose and just move forward. And I think that should give me enough room to be able to lift up on it without having to chip all the, uh, take the exhaust completely off. I don't want to do that if I don't have to. So, but I do have to get under the car temporarily. So that's one of the biggest things I think I, I, I like chip away with time with. Take the cats, move them forward, move the other one back, and pull the timing belt off, get the outlet housing down here, uh, pull the EGR. So yeah, I think that, that's what's, those are the options. Now the good thing is they already replaced the water pump, but either way, I still got to tear the vehicle, tear the engine down to the point where I got to do the timing. Oh boy, boy, boy. So thermostat, everything's getting replaced that I can that needs to be replaced. One crazy thing about this, this did not have bolts for the mass airflow sensor. How the hell this thing don't have any bolts for the mass airflow sensor? I don't understand that. I don't get it. So I'm gonna pull off the strut bar. That's the next thing. And uh, valve covers. Um, we'll pull that off, let the bolts in the back soak and keep on chipping away. So slow progress. It's a few days later and I uh, started pulling everything off of this vehicle. It's, it's a lot, I ain't gonna lie. It's a lot. The intakes are not designed like some of the other models where you have clear access. Uh, you have to use a, a, like a boxed in portion of the wrench to get the lower part of intake off. Uh, cool thing I didn't know, it has like a little weep hole down there. So if it's dripping through the tube for the water pump, the bypass tube, it'll just leak down, which is cool. Didn't know that, learned something new. So um, I'm probably about three hours into it. I'm just, I was trying to get this off in a simplistic form. Maybe I thought I could take the catalytic converter, lean it back to the, like kind of lean it off a little bit and pull the converter off. I left one bolt down there, just strapped to the block, took the bolts off and I'm gonna pull this head off and I'll probably do the same for that one in the, in the uh, not rear bank, but I don't know if it's, that's the bank one and get it off. So let's get this bank two off. Check the valves because we, we saw that one of these, I think it was number four, had wound up kissing the piston, the valves. So we'll see if there's any issues. And um, check that oil consumption problem. And it, it I, I, know that, I know this need piston rings, but we're doing the minimum. We're just doing the heads, the valves, and whatever oil consumption issue we had, hopefully some of it will be alleviated with uh, the valve seal replacement. So I'm gonna let them it's gonna go to the machine shop and all the stuff is gonna get done. I'm also gonna replace this here because this is so common to leak, the BBT, bearing valve solenoid. So I'm gonna replace this whole thing. I'm gonna relieve that rear bank if I can find a gasket set for it without having to replace the whole thing. So let's get this off.
see what we got. Mm. One down, one to go. Head gasket looks great. Didn't have any head gasket issues. This is a 156,000 mile head gasket. It looks awesome. It's straight. I wouldn't reuse it. And it's not wobbly or anything, so. Good job, hon. Here we are. It's out of the bore. So it was four. You can see those marks at the top. That's where the valve wound up hitting the piston. Those grooves there. And uh, it just scuffed it. It's not bad. It's kind of the good thing with this carbon. It left. It gave it a means of transferring the impression. So that's definitely a bent valve on that. And that's the intake side. So let's go here. There's our intake. There's where it met. Look at it. Look how off it is. I'm just looking at it. It kind of sits down a little bit, like it's pushing down that way. Look at that. There's one bent valve. That's a definite right there. I'm pretty sure we have others. That's one definite bent valve. So I'm gonna work on pulling the rear, well the bank one, off and then I'll push this out, take everything to the machine shop, get this cleaned up so I can get ready for reassembly. This is a lot, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's a lot. Um, getting that rear converter, honestly it's, just, it's the pain. Um, once you get the heads on, you know, all the just replace everything it's not gonna be I'm gonna document everything as far as where I need to go because it's, it's quite a bit and I got a quite a few cars to work on so I don't want to get um, put in the wrong situation so I'll just wrap them the bolts and stuff in rags and the, the blue shop tiles and write what I need to on them but uh, I'm gonna get the pistons cleaned up really good I mean this is definitely uh, that's not good uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this is consuming some oil all right, let's get this other bank off. Finally, I am on the first bank, about to pull this head off. Uh, what I did, I simply went underneath, disconnect the lower exhaust, the three 14 millimeter bolts, and there was one mounting bracket for the catalytic converter on the oil pan, 12 millimeter, loosened it, excuse me. Loosen that, loosen the bolts around the exhaust manifold with your 12 millimeter. Pull it back. I'm gonna let it sit there. And um, got all the accessories and stuff off. So now I can finally extract this head from the rear bank. Get that out of the way. 14 millimeter 12 point. I'm using. like when you're taking them off everything is just breaking underneath mm -hmm. oh gosh this way the bolts are on so tight man I hope I hope none of the threads are pulled off that'll just make a bad day now I'm kind of regretting that I decided to do the head gaskets 
even though it's more profitable labor it's just labor intensive Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. Here's the first bank. That was bank three, uh, I said bank three, cylinder three, that kissed the valve, that's what we saw on camera. Um, I don't know about that one. And one, so one and three are like, definitely gonna be bent. One. Three. That one's slightly bent down here. It's a lot of stuff to put back. You know, the good thing is these dials here, dial pins are nice and long, you know, uh, versus being short. So you can get the head line up and drop down there, good and even. Nice, thick, uh, I don't know, you know what, this don't even sound right. I thought it's about the head bolts. So this is it, this is everything. Uh, it took me about five hours to get to this point, I wanna say, not really time myself. I just got so much stuff I'm working on in between this. And uh, so here we are, everything's off. I just gotta run to the machine shop, drop these heads off. Um, I'm gonna recommend that they do check everything, to do the valve seals, change the valve, uh, valves and stuff, obviously, that are ones that are bad. Um, check everything and um, get back to it, man. All right, I'll see you in a few days. Some days later, so about, probably about a week later, since I last recorded any updates. So, um, just getting the block cleaned up. My heads did come in from the machine shop. Man, they um, did about $900 worth of work. And uh, for both heads, we did. Uh, they did a valve adjustment. Uh, they replaced several valves. And um, cleaning, shaving, seals. I just told them just to go through it, make sure everything is right. So, I'm going to show you that in a second. But first, uh, there's um, just cleaning the... Piston tops with a wire wheel. I know it's gonna be uh, people have their thoughts about it, but I mean, it's well, what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the tops of them off. And uh, the reasons being, you don't want any of that old carbon build up in there uh, because the additive that you add in the fuel, it, they're not gonna clean it. When gas ignites, it leaves that black residue and that soot, and over time, it'll accumulate. So um, clean this off uh, because it can cause pre ignition. This is the before, and then here's what it's going to look like after. I'm not going to go into great detail um, cleaning the piston tops. I just need to get the majority of that carbon build up at least like 95%, get everything blown out of the chamber, get my bolt holes cleaned out, and um, prepped for uh, re reinstallation. So I'm going to have to get some of that oil out of there and then install everything in reverse order. I'm gonna do the rear head first and I'll just show you what I gotta do as far as torquing it down for the front. Now, torque specs for this is 22 foot pounds initially, then 90 degrees and then another 90 degrees. So 290 degrees, so you'll eventually do three steps, 22 foot pounds, 90 and then 90. Um, the, for new bolts, it's gonna be four 90 degrees. So instead of you doing a 180, you'll do like a 260 or something, or two way, whatever, 180, um, 90, so 270. So you'll be 270 degrees, like around like eight o'clock, I guess. And nine, we're nine o'clock, eight or nine, yeah, nine o'clock position. 
so I have new bolts. It came with the head gasket set, so I'm, I don't want to chance anything. Do it right first time, so I don't got to worry about it. Have my best chances of everything working. So here's the head here. Looks great. This is the bank one, the rear bank. Uh, it looks phenomenal. Now for the other head, I do have a VVT solenoid, so I'm going to change that on the other head for bank two. Because a lot of times what happens, they're prone to leaking by the dipstick and get on the alternator. But let me show you what this looks like underneath. There's our valves. They look beautiful. Look really good. Shaved. Um, they did a really good job. Here where I am, um, I can just drop it off at Napa. They'll send it off to their machine shop and they'll redo, redo the head. Let me see if I can see any new valve seals in there. Eh, not quite. Eh, not quite. I have to look and see what color the valve seals are. I don't know if there are two different styles for the intake and exhaust side. But, uh, but yeah, did an excellent job. Can't complain. <sighs> so, it's approximately about 11, 30, 12 o'clock right now. I'm gonna work on this for eight hours and who knows what may happen. I may, I'm definitely gonna get the heads, both the heads on, the catalytic converters. I'm gonna get it built up to the point where the only thing I gotta do is the timing. Worst case scenario, I'll just do the timing tomorrow. Uh, but I honestly probably, I likely could just finish it today and not have to worry about anything. <sighs> and, uh, and I can test it, check over my work uh, and uh, repair whatever I got. Cause the plan is to have, is Friday right now I did project I'll be done Tuesday so those two weeks usually from when I start to finish when I get these head jobs the machine shop being the variance in my workload so over project under deliver all right let me get this other side cleaned up and I'll show you what I'm going to do as far as getting the heads installed on the bank two side after I get bank one done all right, I got the uh, rear head on and the exhaust manifold on. Problem, problem is I had a problem. Uh, I couldn't torque the head all the way down on the third step. I just left it at two because what would happen, it would, where are those bolts at? It would get to a point where it would bind and I couldn't torque it all the way down. So I got through two steps and um, I think it's one, two, I think. It's the one on the left side of the oxygen sensor from what we're looking at that was the bolt that just kept giving me problems and i cleaned it cleaned the bolt holes used compressed air to get it all out i put brake cleaner and i cleaned them four times before i installed the head lubed the uh, bolts up just like the manufacturer suggests all of them went fine except for that one so what i would do i took that one out after i made my pass and then start having problems after the first step so I want to say so we got through step one and then step two came that's when I had some issues going to step two so um, that bolt only has 180 degrees all the other ones also has 100 so we only did two two so we did 22 foot pounds 90 and 90 so they all just have the pretty much um, third step basically third step 180 degrees so, um, I just went on ahead, pulled the boat out, cleaned the boat hole with a brake cleaner and just ran it in dry. And I still, once it tightens, you can't go back and tighten it up again because it starts to bind. I don't, I don't know what happens. I don't know. Uh, so if you're putting it in there for the first time, you can go right on through it and it wouldn't bind. But once you let it sit in uh, it, it grabs it ain't doing nothing. It's gonna bind so uh, I'm just gonna hopefully these two aren't damaged or compromised as a result of being used um, Because I don't know what's up with that bolt hole, but I'm gonna put we're gonna do the front. I clean the front bolt holes just like I did with the rear I'll lube these up just like the direction state And I'm gonna um, run them in there uh, maybe there was something wrong with that bolt hole. 
Just looking at threads here. Maybe I'll just run these threads in a wire brush. Something. I don't, I don't know. I know sometimes if I had some ARP grease, um, I know I had issues before putting some heads in. I would just line it with the ARP uh, stud grease, and it would work. I, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I don't. I have. I haven't rebuilt a engine with ARP heads does in years. So. Um, Maybe I'll look for something in the future, but the engine oil isn't working. Let me do the front. Let me show you. Hopefully, I don't have no problems with this and it goes straight on through. And uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to put these two defective ones or the used ones at the top here where they're accessible. I have some 530 fresh motor oil that I'm using. Oh shoot, did I literally? Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm paying attention to this camera and I poured a little bit. Pour a little bit out. There's pass 22. So got a good base. It's 22 foot pounds. I went back. I went over it twice. And uh, okay, so we're gonna do the first 90 degree. I have a degree wheel here.
So here's one of the questionable ones. See how it responds. I don't like that. So oh, I might have a problem going back over it the second time. That's one pass. I'm gonna go back over it one more time, but I don't like the way a couple of them felt, so wish me luck. All right, start on the second pass. So I don't forget. We're all starting at 12 o'clock. Here it goes. All right, that worked out. Still got all the other ones to do, so never know. Four. 
the noise. That's the second. That's why I'm, I, it, it was doing that. So I only got two more to go. Hopefully, I'm going to leave it alone after I get these two. And hopefully, we shouldn't. Here was the other one. That was binding. Oh, darn. My, I guess I ran out of memory. I didn't get the binding on this lower one here. Uh, the camera shut down. Shoot. Shit. But this one's binding. Um, I, I, I didn't get 180 degrees out of it. Well, that last 90. I just managed to get about uh, 80 and I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, so I'm hoping that that second pass of the 22 foot pounds, maybe that put it in a more reliable torque spec uh, or like a more firm area. I gave it a good solid base is what I'm saying. Hopefully it did to where uh, that 180 degrees will suffice. I think it will. And, uh, so we'll see what happens. Let me go ahead and get everything else knocked out. I'm running low on memory and I got to clear my phone space. But I'm going to get all the accessories back and hope you know, we'll see what happens when we get it started. Oh, and here's the VBT portion here. This is what I replaced. I'm glad I did because the machine shop kind of sabotaged me in a way. Now, this is supposed to have sealing all around here, and it was only sealing in the front. So it sits like this. And the valve cover sits here. So this gap here that wasn't sealed off, I mean, that was going to leak. I'm hoping that joker don't leak. But just my luck and what's going on currently, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. God, I hope they did that right. And I'm hoping it's like probably so it's tucked away in there pretty good. So hopefully there's no... Uh, issues and it's a nice flat machine surface hopefully we should be okay but i know this is glued up very good that's fine so let me get everything knocked out and we'll be back all right it's been a i went on live and i assembled everything from the bottom to the top as far as the intake uh we did the head so i showed you that and here we are, finished product. It's not, well, not finished. It's at the state where I can start it up. Did the timing belt, got that lined up. Uh, I just made a couple revolutions and the marks lined up just fine. This top dead center. Now, one thing I did see that I didn't do, I guess the one they tried to take the crank bolt off, they heated it up or did, I don't know what the hell they did, but this is broke. It wound up being like that when I got it. So I took a picture before I pulled it off and I'm going to send it to the customer and let them know. But, uh, and the bolt that comes, the crank bolt is kind of like hard to go in and go out, but it's not cross threaded. It's probably just a little dirty, but it goes in and out. I'm not going to break my neck over it because I'm thinking it's about near impossible to get out anyway. So, um, I got coolant in there. Like I got a gallon. So that should lubricate the water pump a little bit. I got, I still got the old oil in there. I'm not, I'm gonna change the oil once I get it running and uh, everything's fine. So yeah, I did leave the old oil in there. So I'm gonna just let, just let the junk circulate, get in the filter and do what I gotta do. So I don't think I gotta worry about anything. Um, <sighs> Manifolds, okay, swap plugs, everything. Yeah, everything's hooked up. Got the ground strap. All I got to do is put the harmonic balancer on there real quick and hook the battery up because I charged it before I disconnected everything and we should be able to get a first start up. And uh, we'll see what happened. I'll show you the oil level. It's my brand new dipstick. The oil looks good. Looks fine. All right, let's do the, let's prepare for the first start up. All right, I got the timing cover on and I got the harmonic balancer on. So I got the lower part of the timing cover. I got to put the tops on. Uh, so I'll just, if I got to put the harmonic, harmonic balancer on, I just went ahead and threw that the bottom half on. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what better time to be nervous than now. now I still got to get those bolts. I don't know why this mass airflow sensor don't have any screws in it. So it should work to start up initially. 
Uh, I'm just going to go over a check. The main thing I did check oil. Got a gallon of coolant in there. Uh, all my hoses are hooked up. Spark plugs. It has compression. I spun it over by hand. Time marks lined up. That's the biggest thing. Um, battery charge is on. That's, that's, that's on 78%. Um, yeah. I, uh, okay. First startup. It's either going to break uh, or work and then eventually break. <laughs> so, um, and again, I did the heads only two steps with new bolts instead of three because I couldn't achieve three. So here it goes. At, at best, it still should start up. It's just going to probably, um, I think we'll be fine. I'm pretty sure we'll be perfectly fine. Huh? Yeah, I think we'll be good. I should just start up, but I'm just going over some scenarios in my head at the moment. You know, I'm nervous. All right. Damn, that started right on up. It's got a slight mist to it. So it's got to burn all that uh, oil unburned. Yeah, okay, it went into a limp homo because of the misfire. That's likely what happened. Because that high idle. A few reasons why I did that. That sound like a limp home mode. It's got a mist to it. And again, I don't know. Let me make sure this oil is moving. Yeah, the oil is circulating. And I don't know what, I've never worked on this car before, so I don't know if a coil had failed. I don't know, I don't know anything. Let me shut it down. Let me disconnect the battery and reconnect it. That'll shut the check engine light off. That should. Um, let's go find my 10 millimeter. I should. Still did the same thing. Oh, I don't have the EGR valve hooked up. That might do it. Right, let's try it again with the EGR valve hooked. Something else probably is not hooked up. <laughs> well, it, it's running a little better. I got, my, uh, got my O2 sensor hooked up. So it's not an limp. It's not a, a misfire anymore. So it might have been the reason why.
definitely running better. I hope, I hope that's what it was. I'm gonna still scan it, do my little testing and stuff, but it was definitely running normal. It's not, it doesn't sound like the limp home mode with that faint misfire. All right, I got a, a P3400 cylinder one, uh, uh, the bank deactivation, so it's back there. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna. I wonder if I got anything crossed up. Uh, nope. Those connectors went in the appropriate spot. Dang it, man. See, I don't know what specifically was wrong with this car before I got it running. I'm gonna have to do some investigating on that P3400. Um, I, want, I don't know if it's because of the timing, not timing, but because the alternator's not hooked up, if that have anything to do with it. But it shouldn't. Maybe I got a ground strap not hooked up properly. I'll look for that too. So let me get this running right. I'll let you know what I find out. All right, it's been about 10 minutes later and uh, there's no more pending codes, no more store codes. Everything's running normal. What it was, the pressure switch. So this was a pre-existing issue, I can guarantee you. So the pressure switch on the rear bank was defective. I just swapped that out. That's what Identifix said it was the pressure switch. And I didn't pull up any PID data. It was quick and easy. I just swapped it out and it worked. Luckily, I replaced that because of the common problems it has. So I know this car has some pre-existing problems. This switch just shouldn't fail. She's been driving this thing, like just been not properly maintaining it. That's all that is. So it runs normal now. It's idling better. It has a little pop. Once everything has to circulate and warm up, head gasket has to set and mate. So uh, once everything calibrates and adjusts, uh, it can be a lot smoother. Hmm. Just me. I'm gonna let it idle. I should probably just do a snap throttle, but I'm gonna let it do its thing. I wish it can, um, it should just be a little bit more fluid as far as like how it's running. I don't like the low idle or the little pop that it got. Maybe it got to go through like an acclimation, but then again, I don't have the alternator hooked up. I just got to jump. I just got this charging station hooked up. So everything's running good. I'm going to get everything buttoned up, get the coolant feel. Once I get the alternator hooked up, it should clear out with 14 volts. I'll give you the finished product. All right, it's the next day. Uh, the car is idling. It needs some motor mounts on this thing, but it, it runs smooth. It's just the motor mounts are bad. Uh, they have a high failure rate. But um, now I had the P0, P3400 code come back uh, this morning, even if I after I changed the pressure switch to, from the old one, and it still came on. So I started checking some stuff. Long story short, I could, I could get it to on the PID data, the rocker arm pressure switch to go on off, on off. Long story short, I just wound up changing the new one to the back one and the problem moved over. So, two bad pressure switches. So she can't tell me that this car did not have any previous problems before this major catastrophe happened. This car ran like crap initially. It had to. Two bad pressure switches. You know, but I'm gonna see if she'll tell me the truth. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll ask her. Um, let's see what she say, but I had some pressure switches laying around. They do have them at the park still for $180. I didn't go pick one up. Um, I did not. Luckily, I had one laying around, so I just threw that in there so I can get it running. So I, at least I can drive it, and I'm, I'm gonna confirm with her if she want to put a new pressure switch in or not. But it's running fine. The oil's changed. The coolant is circulating. I mean, I'm gonna have to top it off, but I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna start working on some other stuff. Probably might even take it on a test drive now while it's running fine, but I'm gonna let it sit and idle at the fans 
kick on and off and then uh, check the coolant and then take it on drive so let me get the uh, I'll eventually just show you the mileage as a matter of fact let me do that now oh boy let's do the mileage test I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna have to reset that do that right I think I can do that right now but I did change the oil should start to do its thing. There it go. And then press it again. I wish all cars were this easy, but it's not. And uh, should be at 100%. There we go. So we're going to reset trip A. Then we're going to reset trip B. And um, yeah, I'm going to drive it around and I'll show you what happens at uh, 100 miles. All right, just to update, I done drove. I said drove. I drove 113 miles currently, and um, I've had some problems between driving and uh, 50 miles. I've had pressure switch problems while I'm having to replace the pressure switches for the VTEC. Got that fixed, and now even though it completed a drive cycle, a full drive cycle, I'm just getting misfires on bank two now for what i understand it's supposed to be like the odd bank one three five on the firewall side and two four six on the um radiator side but unfortunately that i that didn't fix kind of screwed me up like messed my head and then screwed me over messed my head up so front bank should be two four well four five six and this is what is kind of like it's correlating all the misfires on one bank and I'm thinking what happened because I've had this misfire before with the vehicle and I cleared it and drove it and everything was fine but it is it's just progressively acting up I think they just adjusted the valves too tight um, my feelings are <laughs> my feelings are honestly hurt man I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go over I complain at the latter part of this video so I pulled the plugs, inspected the plugs. What I'm probably going to do, just just for the hell of it, swap the coils from one bank to the other and see if it moves. Good for me if it do, because it just need coils. Uh, and kind of, I guess, bad if it don't. I mean, both of them are bad situations. It's going to cost more money. And even then, it, it's, it's just an inconvenience. But it really feels like a valve problem because when I started up this morning, it was worse. It like it would, it was the misfire was counting pretty bad. Um, and I wound up getting pending codes because it was in the two hundreds. Now I'm idle. And I mean, it's just gradually ascending. You know, if you cut it off and cut it back on, it'll it'll clear and uh, start to repopulate once you start it back up. We all need to forget that. There we go. So this is kind of like why you, you know, if you have some problems and misfires, you shut the car down and start it back up because it, it forgets the misfires essentially. But then it'll start to repopulate the four, five, six. It runs fine. Give it a little gas. It's smooth, but that's why I'm led to believe this is a valve problem because on the snap throttle, it's fine. On the snap throttle, it's fine. At a idle, it's not good. One thing, let me check. Let me check, see what the RPM is. Because worst case scenario, six. You know what I could do? Clean the throttle body. I'm gonna do that before I do anything else. Clean the throttle body. See if it bumps the idle up and see if that resolved this because if I can get the idle maybe the idle is just a little too low if I can, maybe I can get it about probably about 700 maybe that'll help but then again let me see if there's a target idle No, it don't look like it.
Mm. Gosh darn. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt to try it, but it really feels like a feels like a valve problem. It's not having to accommodate a bunch with a throttle body. I've had the EGR lift, EGR valve sensor, EGR lift is zero. I've had that fail, but that's, that's not the case. So this is the problem when you work on customers' cars and you have no history. Like, are they telling the truth or are they not? Misfire, total misfire. Yeah, let's see. It's like, well, do you just send it and see what happens or because it's fine when it gets hot like when it's warm this is this is okay this is not that big of a deal but it definitely could run smoother At least, in a way, it's the front bank. Hmm. I'll probably just swap spark plugs and coils and see if it moves. I think that'll probably be the simplest thing I just throw some plugs in the front number five started running at one point um, it's not now like I said it's fine when it's warm this one is cold it's a problem just to go back let me just show you uh, that the readiness so I actually I looked at the codes here Okay, the EVAP's not complete yet. I thought it was complete. That's not a big deal. That's just usually the last monitor. Um, I think because I had that pending misfire, that's probably why. But there's no there's no fault code. It was pending at one point. Now it's, it's not. I'm kind of like, I don't know. Do you, Am I just being paranoid or what? But I know this car can run a lot better. So, and the other problem was the fact that the customers kind of bitching and complaining about, you know, why my car need X, Y, and Z when, you know, she totally neglected her vehicle anyway from the beginning. So it's kind of like why I'm like uh, a little bit reluctant about doing anything else. Like why? If she's all she's going to do is complain. So it's like, you know, what do you do? It's running fine. It's nearly completed the drive cycle. I'm not going to break my neck over it. I mean, I guess some things can just wear and break in, drive it, and it should clear up. Good thing is it's starting to warm up, so it's not going to, maybe once you put several miles on a couple, ten, like maybe 10,000 miles on the things probably should be have worn in. But it feels like it needs mounts, though. I'll figure something out. It's later in the day. I'm still driving the car. I got 144 miles on it currently, and uh, the, it, it's still not running that well. I put the spark pulled the spark plugs in the front bank, cleaned them, and nothing. So I thought it got better, but it's just when it's cold, it's worse. But when it's warm, it's better. This is not bad. I'm not satisfied with it because I got to get this car back, and it need to be at zero like all the other banks. See, like, um, not cylinder one populated and then went away. That's what needs to happen. 
it needs to be like one, two, and three. Four, five, and six is just uncooperative. So my thing is, what I'm gonna do, I hate to have to do it. I'm gonna have to pull the valve cover back off. Well, pull it off, not back off, but pull it off and adjust the valves myself. Unfortunately, I paid for an adjustment through the machine shop, which cost me $200 and it didn't work out. And I was like, man, I should have just did it my damn self and I did not do it. Damn it. So if you want something done right, you do it your damn self. Not mad at them, I'm just mad at the fact that just from the part, the new parts I'm getting from taking your time and doing things right, shit still is gonna happen out of your favor. And uh, this is just one of those things, and I want to. I need to get this car done because it was quoted to be done tomorrow and gone. Everything else worked fine though, even though we have the misfires. Let me go back. Oops. Uh, there's no check engine light. There's no codes present. It completed a full drive cycle. And <sighs> evap should be done now. Nope, evap not complete yet. Probably gotta wait till the morning. But everything else is fine. It's ready for inspection here in the state that I'm in. So I'm, I hate to have to do it, but this is just going to be another long night. Pull the valve cover off, adjust the, adjust the valves. At least it's the front. It, it could have been the rear. This is the better case, at least. So we'll be back. It's my last ditch effort. Got the intake off. Here we are. You see the valves. You see the valves. So I'm in the process of this is the last valve I got to adjust and then take no more than like 10 minutes to get to this point. I will have to change the valve cover and put a new one on here because the old one expanded. So I do have a amount $50 for a valve cover gasket set. Half I would never use. So what I did, I pretty much adjusted um, all of them to 12 thousandths. Uh, that's why I'm adjusting them to because for one, um, I on Identifix, all right. One of the guys said he had to adjust them out uh, beyond the service limit, but I, I find it you know a happy medium with 12,000, so I'm not going to break my neck over it. Uh, they were very tight. Number six seems to be uh, still reasonably tight on in some instances. The uh, exhaust side, one is a, definitely a lot tighter than the other. Um, I'm not going to check them. I just want to get this done with the knocked out. I don't know what they are currently, but they are definitely, I can't fit this 12,000 in there. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's like 6,000. But I'll tell you what, let me, let me just do it. I think this one go down to six. No, let's go down to eight. Uh... Like on this one, I can't even fit an eight in there. That's point oh oh eight. Point oh shoot, I can't fit that in there. I got it in that one, but this other one here. Oh, no, did I? Ah, not quite. No. Yeah, I can't get it in that one. So I'm not going to put them at specs. I'm just going to go outside of specs. And um, we'll be fine. So let me crack. I got those tight. Oh, I got to get this one. I forgot. But I went back over it.
All right, we get the valve cover back on. We'll look at the pit data. All right, got everything put back together. Just the moment of truth. I got the garage door open just a little bit. <sighs> the awkward silence. All right, let's see what we got misfire wise. Now, before on cold startups, it was bad. It actually feels a lot better idling. It feels really good idling. It has a slight bump, but it's nothing as significant as it was before. This is, I feel better about this. It even sounds better, but it, the, the, the little bumps are just far and in between with the very uh, balanced idle. Oh yeah, I'm, re I'm really confident on this. Cool. Look, I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes. This will be the telltale. Um, I don't know if I can pull up the time here for you for reference. Okay. 1454, that's not the real time. So we'll get about five minutes, let it populate, and I'm gonna show you what the end result is. Look, I'm gonna tell you, I make mistakes just like everybody else. I did not put the bolts in the freaking cover. Golly. And it was crazy, so much vacuum in there. It's not even misfiring, no check in the light or anything. I'm so stupid. All right. So the car is reaching about normal operating temperatures. And again, I got 144,000 miles on here that I've driven. And this is the best it's ran. There's no check engine light codes. I didn't kill it, clear anything. This is um, Bobo Fossil. It's been running for 10 minutes. And uh, zero misfire. So that fixed my problem. We had tight valves. The machine shop over tightened them and um, loosened them up, took care of it. You saw where I adjusted them at. Um, I'm so confident that I, I, I feel better internally that this car runs good. I, I I know the motor ran fine or everything I did putting this motor back together was not perfectly by the book, but it runs great. It feels reassuring that I can give this car back and know that she will be in good shape because I just have a better gut feeling that this is this is my name's on this product now so we're fine so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna include this video because we had our conflict resolution and unfortunately had another conflict and uh we see the resolution now i'm gonna show you there's no fault codes no codes i'm gonna show you the readiness and uh the only thing that hasn't completed was the evap everything else has went through so it was technically ready for inspection, state inspection. And um, so we're, we're good. I'm, I'm in good shape. Um, if anything happened, I'll definitely update, but uh, I'm well ahead of schedule. I told her it'll be done in two weeks. This was like the end of the, of the right at the brink of the threshold here. And it's Monday, tomorrow, the car's gonna be done. Take it to the car wash, wash the outside of the car, give it back to her. She's in good shape. If anything happened, I'll definitely update, uh, but uh, Hit that link, subscribe to the channel, stay informed, had a reassurance of my work. See you next one.